I'm Simon Jenkins. I've lived in London all my life. I've worked here all my life. I've written about it for most of my life. I've now written a short history of London. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions about it. I think my interest in London began when I was a child. I was brought up in Regent's Park, or just off Regent's Park at the end of the war. I can just remember going for walks in Regent's Park and seeing through the trees the famous Nash terraces and the extraordinary whiteness of them. London was very black then and Nash's terraces just glowed white and I couldn't believe later on to learn that we almost demolished them. It was one of the things that made me realise how delicate London really is. And I think that, that moved me when I, I was involved in the, the great battle of my life which, which was to be a part of the Save Covent Garden movement in 1973 when again uh, the authorities were determined to demolish what I saw as part of London's character, uh, turned it into another Barbican. And we had a terrific battle for two or three years and we did save it, or, or others saved it, but we helped save it. And I, I realised how, how fragile the city was and how important it was to look at it, study it, analyse it, describe it, and then force on the authorities the need to save it, or save the bits of it that needed saving. I think the bit of London's history that really was critical was the 19th century. Uh, at the beginning of the century, it was one of the biggest cities in Europe, but it wasn't all that outstanding. By the end of the 19th century, it was the biggest city in the world. It was an imperial capital. Um, it, had, uh, it had invested vast amounts of money coming back from the empire in its development. It had really sort of become the iconic world city because it was a city which was unlike any other. Uh, it had no need to defend itself. It was never under attack. It wasn't like Paris or Vienna, which were sort of perpetually involved in wars. Uh, London was at peace. It had unlimited supplies of land, so it could simply expand outwards uh, as far as it wanted. And by the end of the 19th century, the 19, 1860s and 70s were critical. Um, the railways had enabled people to live almost anywhere they, anywhere they liked in the vicinity of London. Even quite poor people commuted into London by train. And it was that train commuting phenomenon that made London spread and enabled it to really prosper. Um, at the expense almost of the rest of the world. I think London's been through many crises when it's, uh, it, so to speak, taken a wrong turning. It burned itself down in the 17th century, it was bombed in the Second World War. It then did terrible things to itself in the 60s and 70s when it demolished far more buildings than were ever bombed in the war. The problem now is the uh, completely uncontrolled development of modern buildings where they are not appropriate. There are plenty of places that they are appropriate. Uh, you can see behind me, dotted around, um, point blocks, put up wherever a developer wanted it, um, the local authority allowed it. If I was Mayor of London, I'd simply stop that. I'd cluster the buildings, but I'd make sure that every new building that went up respected a street. Uh, London used to be a city of streets, it's become a city of blocks. And uh, I just think that streets are the key to any city, but particularly London. That we must protect our streets, they're where communities flourish. I think if I went back uh, just for a day, not a week or a year, I would love to see medieval London. It was a completely crammed hive of activity. I'd love to see the old monasteries which covered about a quarter of the city's area. Uh, I'd love to see the tradespeople doing everything in the street. Everything was done in the street. I just love streets. And I think medieval London, uh, from the waterfront to the, to the cathedral, to the uh, to Westminster, which is where the court was based, um, uh, to the kind of the, the filth, squalor, but also dynamism of the East End. That's the place to be. I think uh, when people come to London, I always say to them, look, don't go and see the obvious sights, Buckingham Palace. Everyone, everywhere's got a Buckingham Palace. Um, uh, go to funky London, um, go to, go to uh, Covent Garden, uh, go to Soho, go to Marylebone, um, go south of the river to Bermondsey, uh, go to Shoreditch High Street, go to the places where there's activity because it's the, it's the activity, the vitality of London, particularly its shopping and its trading, that makes it such a special place and is, is really quite unlike anywhere else in Europe. <laughs>